Are you actually going to be in here? Mm. You actually want to be in here? You sure? Mm. Okay. Mm. Just taste the first week, but I make things difficult. Okay. Okay, so, I've got these. I want to figure out are any of them parallel. Which ones? First and last one. First and last, how do you know? Same gradient. Same gradient, right? So, if and only if. So, if and only if M1 equals M2, therefore parallel. Cool. Hopefully we remember that and that's burnt into your brain for forever. Right? Cool. So that's nice and easy for you. Alright. What if now I say the point is any of those, is it? No? Good. I want a parallel line that runs through the point one two. How can I find this line? <coughs> okay, thoughts? Sub it in the same gradient. Sub it into the same gradient. Right, right. So am I subbing it into this? Well, um, yeah. Well, uh, okay. So okay. If I sub it into that, then I'll get one for that, two for that. Well, three times like one is three plus four is seven. Seven equals two. That seems like a problem. So two equals three um, times one plus e. Okay, right. So I write a new rule. I'm going to write a new rule and go. Okay, y equals keep the three and then pick some arbitrary c. Cool. Now we're going to chuck this in. Um, Chuck that in, so we get 2 equals 3, 1 plus c, great, 2 equals 3 plus c, therefore c equals what? Hang on. Therefore y equals 3x minus 1. So you know, I've got, great, a line, this line is parallel to those guys and also runs through the point one two. Cool, cool. Nice, easy, relatively boring. Okay, uh, we are going to do that super quick. I'm going to pick okay, this guy, and I want that to run through the point 1, 2, so I need a line parallel to that and run through the point 1, 2. Go, go. Ready, set, go. Done. There you go, nice. It's like five seconds. Done. Cool. Uh, it's what, 15 seconds? Nice. 15 seconds still. 20 seconds. 
Cool. All right. Beautiful. Uh, let's. Oh, okay. We've got to pick someone. Y equals 4x take 2. Okay, cool. Are we all in agreement? Everyone's happy. Super easy. This is boring. Yep, it's old. Crap. Excellent. Okay. So now I'm going to take this guy. Okay. You just switch them around. I want to get a line that is. <coughs> Reciprocal of the other, which just means negative one over. Then you're going to be uh, perpendicular. If things are perpendicular, what angle are they at? <coughs> what angle? 90. 90. Cool. So that's a 90 degree. Perfect. So this thing's going to have to have a gradient of negative one third. Cool. Okay. How can I find my green line? Yep, go on. Right. So I've got y equals, what was it? Uh, negative 1 over 3 x yep. plus yep. c. Beautiful. Okay. So I've got that. Brilliant. Cool. Well, I've got one piece missing. I've got the c missing. How am I going to find the c? Use the points. Right. Use the point that we know this thing exists on. Cool. So we'll sub that in. So we get 10 equals negative 1 third 2 plus c. 10 equals negative 2 thirds plus c. c therefore equals 10 and 2 thirds. So what's that? 32 on 3. Is that what you guys again? Yeah. Yep. Cool. y equals negative 1 third x plus 32 on 3. Beautiful. That easy. All right. This is all from last year. Yeah. Yeah. No? Yeah? Yeah, getting more than that. Okay. Beautiful. Alright. Same thing as before. This time, we'll go what is this guy? Negative 1 over 3. Uh, we'll say the point. To the rule. I think not like that. To 11. Okay. So, this guy. First grade. The point to 11. I want to get the uh, perpendicular for that. Everyone knows what's happening? Yes? Yep, go cool. pretty set, go. Okay.
Three seconds. Thirty seconds. mx plus 3. For what values of m will this line have a positive x intercept? Okay. <coughs> first things first. Do we get what the question's asking? Yeah. Yeah? Everyone's totally happy about what it's asking? No? Okay, put your hands on. Cool. Alright. So, whenever you're not sure what's going on, Nine times out of ten, a good start. Draw something. Okay. What what is this? What's it represent? Right. The whole the whole thing is a line, yeah? Just a straight line. Cool. Do we know anything about this line? The y intercept. The y intercept's three, yeah? Okay. So let's draw some picture. Cool. Alright, well it has to go through three. Beyond that, do I know anything else about it? No. I do know that it's straight though, yeah? Cool. Alright. So it could be doing something like that. Or it could just as easily be doing something like that. Or anywhere else. Right? I could have flipping around everywhere. Cool. Okay. Well, what do I want to do? I want to figure out where its x-intercept is. Okay. So we're going to do this in a general way. 
So we're going to solve for the x-intercept even though we don't know what the gradient is. Okay? How do I normally solve for an x-intercept? Y is zero. Y is zero, yeah. Okay. So zero equals mx plus three. Okay. Can I get an x-intercept from this? Yeah, it'll just have an m sitting in it. So a minus three divided by m, that equals my x-intercept. Okay. What did I want my x-intercept to do? Positive. Right, be positive. Okay, so I need this thing, negative 3 on m, if it's positive, to be bigger than 0. Okay, well, I've only got one variable now. Multiply everything by m. That's going to be it. Hmm. Is there a slight problem there? Yes. Yeah. Yes. What's happened? Right, this doesn't make sense anymore, right? We've made a slight error in our calculation. Go back a second. What numbers could M be? Could be any number, which includes positives and negatives, yeah? Whenever you've got an inequality, what do you have to watch out for? Right, it's flipping around. When does it flip around? When you multiply or divide by negatives, perfect. Okay, so we need to consider two cases. If m is bigger than zero, so it's positive, or if m is less than zero. There's also one other, actually, there's one other case. No. Cool, is there another case? m is exactly zero. m is exactly zero. So let's go down to this. Alright. M is greater than zero. Okay, I multiply by M, does anything change? No? Cool. Alright, so I get this weird statement, and let's just be straight. This weird statement. Okay, if M is less than zero, what happens? Oh, we're still going to multiply by M. I multiply by a negative, what happens? It flips. So I get negative three, flip. M times zero is still zero. Okay, if m is zero, what happens? Um, negative three times zero is zero. Okay, so I still get zero on this side. Does this thing flip or stay? It, it doesn't move. Doesn't move, right? Why? Because it's not negative. Right, it's not negative. Zero is not negative. Okay, cool. Does this make any sense? No. Does this make sense? Yes. Does this make sense? No. Okay, well, m being greater than zero leads to some weird statement, so that can't be true. This leads to a reasonable statement, and there's no restriction on it, that is always true, therefore this must be always true. This contradictory statement, therefore that can't be true. Okay, so what have we found? We've found that if m is less than zero, we end up with an x-intercept that is positive. Let's think about that for a second. M is less than zero. What does that mean? Right, it's a negative gradient. Right, draw another line. There, draw another line. There. Cool. If I, so long as I pick some negative gradient, where's my x at? Where's my x intercept going to be? Somewhere on that positive side, right? Because I can go down, and down, and down, and down until I hit exactly vertical. If I hit exactly vertical, then my x-intercept is zero, which is no longer positive. So I can't go that, but I could go anything else. Uh, another corner case to consider. If I go perfectly flat through that, what's my x-intercept? Right, I don't have an x-intercept yet. Cool. So I can't get to there, but so long as I have a a um, gradient that is something bigger than zero, oh, sorry, something less than zero rather, so it's negative, then I can have whatever I want. Cool, cool. Which hopefully graphically makes a bit of sense. Okay. Let's go to another. Let's say this time. So 
y equals 2x plus c, for what c value will the uh, x-intercept be greater than 5? Okay. First thing first, do we understand what the question is asking? Yes? Yeah? Okay. How are we going to tackle that? Any changes? No, this seems a bit too abstract. Okay. Well, this might be a bit too much. So go back one level. Go, okay, we're going to make this simpler and say, what happens if we make the x-intercept equal to y? Okay, because we know how to do equals better than we do inequalities. Can you uh, solve for c if you know its x-intercept is 5? Yes, no, maybe, I don't know. Asking you guys. Not sure? Given the quietness, I'm going to guess we're not sure. Okay. Well, let's draw this thing. Okay. I could have a whole bunch of different lines. I don't know where my uh, C is, so I've got to just draw things with gradient of 2. Gradient of 2. Gradient of 2. Gradient of 2. Alright, so I've got all these slices. Right? They're all parallel. Is that surprising? No, why not? They're all in the same gradient, same gradient right? so they should be parallel. Cool. Alright. At some point, if I just keep drawing these lines, at some point I'm going to hit exactly 5. So we'll draw that in green. Cool. That's going to be exactly 5. Cool. How can I find this line? What do I know about that line? This x intercept is 5, okay. Can I write that like that maybe? Okay, so I know a point and I know its gradient. Should I be able to get the full line? Yeah, right, okay. So I've got y equals 2, uh, oh, we know the x, no, I'll just write that. Cool, 0 equals 2, 5 plus c, therefore c is neck 10, so we get y equals 2x minus 10 is that green line. Okay, have we answered the question? No. We answered one specific version of the question, we haven't answered the actual question. For what values of c will the x-intercept be greater than 5? Alright, well that would be over here, That for that line, that would be true. Yeah? Okay. Well, how do I get from the green to the orange? Say again. Move further down the x-axis. Move further down the x-axis? Oh, so, as in move further to the right along the x-axis? Okay, yes, true. Uh, how do I express that in that rule though? Yep. Oh, um, oh maybe I should say a little bit. C, C has to be um, like less than negative 10. There we go. Okay, so if I consider this drawing for a second, that's going to be at negative 10. That's at negative 10. Cool. Well, if I move off to the right, necessarily this thing has to be moving down. Yeah? So, if I'm at exactly 5, do I, uh, does that satisfy this condition? No. No, because I need to be greater than 5. Okay? So if C is negative 10, that does not satisfy. But if C is less than negative 10, I'll drift further down, which means I must be on the right side. Welcome. That's what 2F is about. 2F is going to take you more thinking and more time. Cool. 
So 2E is mainly going to be plug and shove and just make sure you're good and quick at it. 2F is the one that's going to start throwing you around a bit. I highly recommend, whenever you don't know what it's asking, try to draw something. Right? If you ever get stuck on a greater than less than, switch it out for an equals, solve for the special case, and then generalize out. Yep. Wouldn't C be equal to a less than negative 10? Okay, so if it was equal to, right, my x intercept would be 5, yeah? Oh, but I want strictly greater than 5. Cool, cool. So yeah, that's a, always consider the corner case as well. So whenever you're just on the line, you can think about that individually. Cool. We're all okay with that? Yep. I highly, uh, I totally expect that people will ask questions about 2F during this class. Because I fully expect that people are going to be like, you what? And that's what. Okay. Cool. Go nuts. I would recommend that you do, out of 2E, have a crack at question 7. If you can do that, then I'd switch over to 2E, because the rest of 2, sorry, switch over to 2F after that, because 2E is probably going to be super easy for most of you. So I'd suggest try 2F while I'm still around, so that you can ask questions about it.
you guys know which is your last day? Which one is that one? Two zero twenty. I don't think it's earlier than that. Yeah, I'm pretty sure you finish earlier than that. It's like the two video of it. On the clock, it says we have still a fast deal with money accurate for the thing. That's like two weeks ago. It's a good activity. It's a good activity. The last, yeah, the last actual class. 10th of December. There we go. Okay. Tuesday the 10th. So we only get one class in week four. Okay. Check who's missing. Oh no, bumped.